What's up guys, this is Jeff with online Cubase tutorials and we are going to start arranging today. With our track here, we've got kick, snare, percussion, um, we've got hats, hi-hats, claps, a ride cymbal, a crash, a bass, and an analog lead. And what you're looking at here is a 16 bar phrase. Um, we can go ahead and give a listen and see where we're at. What I'm doing right now is I'm just removing these MIDI parts from the mixer because they don't really have too much input. You can see the a MIDI part in the mixer has a MIDI part in the mixer is all turned down all the way and it's all the way mixed left. I don't know why it defaults to being in this thing, but I'm just basically going to remove these because the only thing that we can really mix in the mixer is an audio track. So right now you can see these are all mixed dead center. They're all, you know, basically the same volume except for the snare, the delay. And uh, it's a, it's okay for now. We're going to come back to mixing toward the end. But um, in this part, what I want to do is a couple different things. One is we want to start arranging. And in order to arrange, what I found is that it's a little bit difficult to keep this automation going throughout the whole track because you have to remember to if you move the MIDI part the automation doesn't go with it so the the automation is a part of the project it's not a part of the track per se so usually what I do is I take advantage of this feature in Cubase called um, audio export batch um, audio mix down export audio mix down so when you create an audio mix down you start by picking uh, the folder that you want. So if you click on here, I'm going to go to uh, this, the Cubase demo. And I'm just going to put a folder here called Stems. And in that Stems folder is where I'm going to save my um, track. And it's going to be a WAV file. It's going to be uncompressed waves. So what we're going to be doing is bouncing MIDI data to audio. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to burn this automation that I like here into the audio file and we'll just it'll make mixing a lot easier so this is something that comes up a lot is how do I convert MIDI to audio so this is how I do it in Cubase and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one of these at a time and you can see we can do the the bass channel directly or we can do the bass VST instrument in this case I think that probably the easiest is to use our bass and we're just going to output only one channel and if you go to the naming scheme you'll see here like there's separators and channel numbers and stuff that you can put in here. So in this case, I just want to use the name, the track name. And so this name here is going to get overwritten with the name of the, of the track. So this will be base.wave. Um, makes it, it makes it much easier if you just, um, use the, the track naming scheme. Um, cause if you're going to output all of the stuff at once, then it'll use the naming scheme to do it. So in this case, I'm just going to do the base group channel, <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, when I bring that in, you're going to, you know, a lot of other programs you export, you go to your hard drive, you find that you drag it in with Cubase, you can actually just import that right back into the project and make an audio track for it. Um, so it automatically gives you a folder. And you can tell it here. So I, I um, am recording this project in uh, 44K in 24-bit. So I'm going to output a 24-bit WAV file. And uh, that should be it. So what we're going to do is export this track. And it uses this 16-bar um, mark markers. Where, where you lay down markers in your track, that's what's going to get out output. So... This is a really fast way to generate stems for a project is you can just check 
basically everything off here. You can say, you know, every, every channel, every group channel, every FX channel and every VST instrument. And you can just designate a folder and like four bars or something like that. And you can create, um, create a, uh, a folder full of stems really fast with that. But in this case, I just want to do one, one channel, the base. If I export that, it's going to think for a second. It's going to bring it back into the pool. So if I close this export now, I go to the media open pool window, you can see what we've got is new audio base one track and it's automatic. It should automatically be imported down here. So track and there's our, there's our audio clip and you can see the volume's a little bit low. So I might want to um, crank up the, the volume of the bass a little bit um, and then do it again. So let me actually go and hit that retro log instrument real quick, crank up the volume a little bit. Let me see where that's at. Here's the volume it's set to six. Let me crank it up to eight. Just like to get a good volume on that. Let's see how that sounds really quick. If we look at the mixer, we're getting some clipping on the stereo out. I'm just going to turn that down real quick. But we're going to be outputting the bass, the bass channel. So we look good there. All right. So I'm going to try that again. Export audio mix down. And hit export because that saves all your settings. And then I'm going to overwrite that track. And do I want a new version? Yeah, let's go ahead and make a new version. So now you can see in our, let me close this, but now we have a, a much, a much better um, audio export. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this track and call this um, bass audio. And then we can solo this and just make sure that it sounds good and sounds exactly like our bass. Now what's interesting is you're not hearing the delay that we had mapped in there. Maybe, maybe we are, I don't know. Um, I think we're not cause well, we should be. Cause if this whole track is going out, it just does. It sounds a little bit empty. Now let's listen. Instead of listening to this, we'll listen to this. Actually, let's solo the bass group track. Yeah, so we're not hearing some of the effects on there. So it's a little bit of experimentation, but um, this, this uh, version of the bass is actually sounding pretty good. It's nice and clean and we can put effects on it. Um, the same way we did with this. So what we can do is move this bass audio track up here, even though it's not a part of this Retrolog VST, I'll, I like to just organize it that way. So in this bass audio now, uh, we can actually uh, make sure that it's going to the bass track, and then you can select all events on the MIDI part here and mute them. And that way you have a backup in your project of what that's supposed to sound like. And then you have the audio itself and you can rename this as well. This audio, whoops, audio's a car. All right. So now we have bass audio. All right. So it sounds a little bit dry. Um, and the reason why is I guess we didn't get the effects from this. Uh, I'm a little bit, a little bit confused why it didn't, um, include that. But if we mute this delay, maybe it has delay in there. Let's, let's unmute this again and just verify where we're getting that from. Whoops. Uh, select all events unmute. Let's just see. Okay. So what we're missing is the delay. So let's go ahead and mute this MIDI part and we will do the same thing that we did 
for the, and send this to the delay, turn it on and make it post fader. And now let's take a look. All right, that sounds pretty cool. So now that we've got that, we can kind of just leave this channel all by itself. Um, and actually, my bad, that should have been this color. All right, so this base audio now, we can move around the project a lot more easily. And you could do that. I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of producers actually make uh, audio stems of every single track and, and basically convert their MIDI project to an audio project. That's usually a good idea just because if you, for some reason, if your computer screws up or you lose this plugin or you upgrade it to your system to a new version, sometimes you can lose these MIDI um, parts. And so your sounds are kind of gone unless you make stems and make a mix down and all of that. So if you want to be able to work on this moving into the future, it's a really good idea to bounce all of your MIDI to audio and then do what I you know just showed, basically make a new track of audio for every single part and then do your mix down using audio instead of MIDI. So, so you can use Cubase for both and you can intermix it, but it's a really good idea to keep this project um, free of, of uh, any problems in the future. And to do that, you can use the bounce to audio feature. So what I'm going to do actually is save this as a new um, version and just call it demo mix. And now this is the, this is the version that we're going to start um, making changes to, to do the arrangement. So before, uh, before, without any uh, further delays, um, kind of get ready to show the uh, arranging process and we'll, uh, we'll do that in the next video. So thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.